Welcome. This is the February 13th Jail and Zones production user call. We have Dan C, Rod G, Jan B, Antrenig V, Ararat, Dave, and myself, Michael. And it sounds like Dave has an update on his CI visions and needs some help with something. What you got, Dave? So a little recap for those of you who weren't in Coibra or uh, haven't discussed this with me already. The general concept is I wanted to for years to build a native FreeBSD CI tool, and um, it should use all the nice things. So it should use jails, um, it should use um, ZFS. Um, what else do we need? Well, that's kind of that's kind of the core of it. And um, what I wanted was um, a little state machine with Lua hooks, and in the same way that we have um, a jail.conf, and you can imagine that the jail goes through. Um, I'm going to get the order of the states wrong, but in the jail we have uh, like a uh, created, um, and then we have like sort of an active stage where tasks are running into the jail, and then finally we exit the jail and we clean up. We want to have like a little lure hook attached to each of these. Um, so this is trucking along. The core of it is um, a an outer shell that receives a message saying build the things, um, and then it creates a Unix socket, forks one fork creates a web socket to send the the results back um, to uh, to like a, a, a CI server so you can see the results in real time and the other branch of the fork the child um, creates a jail which it needs to be root for um, does some things so that you could you know inject your code inside it and then runs effectively from our perspective a little shell script which does the work and as that work is happening we stream that results back through the Unix socket to the um, other fork, the parent, which then sends them back to the um, to the central CI, the CI server, so you can see the results. And then there's a bit of cleanup happening at the end, and we fetch some artifacts and so forth. And finally, at the end of all that, we delete the jail, ZFS roll back, and we're ready to go again. So that's kind of trucking along nicely. Version one of this I did last year, and that um, works apart from the the hooks, which are a bit, a bit beyond my skill to help, and um, Faraz is helping um, helping out with that. Um, and hopefully, we've got something actually complete to show uh, in a few weeks. Um, that's really it, I guess, in terms of the updates. The piece I'm having is more for uh, trouble is with is more for my own understanding. The version one that I did um, sets up KQs for listening to messages, sorry, KQ for um, standard in and standard out of the sort of the, the process, the sub-process that we run. And now that I've wrapped that into jail, um, it doesn't seem to um, capture them in real time anymore, which I'm a little bit puzzled about. And uh, I need to make a small reproduction script for people to have a look at and, and say what I'm doing wrong. The frustrating thing is most of this was done in July and August last year in New Zealand. And I don't remember it not working then, um, but it was a different version of FreeBSD. It was on my laptop, um, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things have changed under the hood. So it may be that it works on 13.2 on my laptop, um, which I'm going to try this evening and doesn't work anymore on 14 or 15. That's a possibility. Um, that's pretty fun, and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, the original intention for this was to solve a, a very specific problem, which is um, when you're writing network services, um, you want to test them sometimes as, a, as an environment as a whole, and you want to test them um, how they fail under poor network conditions, but you don't want to use a real network for that. What you want is FreeBSD and dummy net so that you can send, then say like 5% like of the packets should drop or 50% um, of the packets should fail. And that was sort of the long-term goal of this. And it's a long way away from that, but the first stage is to be able to run an arbitrary shell script in a container with some lure hooks on either side, stream the results back to another web server that keeps the logs for you, and at the end, fetch the useful artifacts. Um, so that's in a nutshell. Happy to answer more questions as we truck along with that um, any time. Dave? Yeah, sure. Uh, are you sure that you want to use Unix sockets as standard in out instead of pipes? Because I would think that most programs prefer that if you give them uh, a pipe as standard in and a pipe as standard out and standard error and distinct pipes. And if your CI runner can tell the difference, 
between standard out and standard error instead of combining it all on a single socket? Um, I, from my side, I just picked the first thing that works. So I made the I I started off with a Unix socket, and I have one in the parent, one in the child, and then KQ looking at the the traffic coming through, and that seemed to work until I jailed it. Um, I'm sure it was working last year, but no, I'm not particularly certain that Unix sockets are the best solution for this. It's literally the first one I tried, and it worked, so I didn't rethink that uh, at all. Depending on what you want to script, you may even have to deal with creating a TTY device so that you have things like SSH in there, which refuses to read a password from anything except it's controlling TTY. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think that the, the catch is do I want to solve it hunger or um, is it sufficient to have the use case where um, it can clone a repo? Um, externally and if it can clone a repo then that's probably good enough yeah yep and instead of rolling back you may find that it's cheaper to clone the snapshot modify it and then discard the clone um, instead of that's, rolling that's back the single data set yeah that's actually what we do at the moment we have two data sets one has the source code in it and the other one has the uh what from our perspective is a classic jail template whatever you decided to stuff in it and we clone one, um, we make a bare repo, get clone of the other one, and then we hand it over to jail to do the dirty jaily stuff inside it. Yeah, so it's all ZFS clones all the way. It's kind of cheating, really. It's really nice. How far along is your proof of concept? It sounds like you have a few things to test for 14. Um, the main piece I... I, I want that we don't have yet is the is the is the lure hooks and so the um, the thing I wanted to get to was it should be really really easy to extend it in ways that we haven't thought of and all of the CI tools that I use today sort of work on the assumption that um, they should make that quite difficult and the idea is that we have these specific points in the life cycle of our container where you can run things, then um, you know, we can provide you a nice little Lewis sandbox that exposes the things you're allowed to get at and doesn't let you get at the things you're not allowed to get to. And Lua is really, really nice for that. And on top of it, there's lots of it in the base system now. So it's something that I think lots of people are familiar with. Um, and that's the main piece that's missing. Um, um, yeah. And, sorry, yeah? Yeah. It should also play really nice with uh, jail includes, but basically you would have your jail snippets and then the CI runner provides the jail block in a single file, which is just written atomically with a single write in place. And then your host jail.conf could just include that with a glob so that it would be part of your active jail set until you or oh, your CI runner, remove that file again atomically with a RM. And then it even is part of your global jail configuration while it's running. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's some of the new stuff that's gone in the last six months could make this a lot easier than what I'd originally planned when I first started noodling it out on paper. Yeah. Like having jail descriptors and knowing um, from the outside, certainly when the jail is, is, is cleaned up, it would be a nice change, but I haven't looked at that yet. So what Lua hackers do we have among us? I'm guessing Ontranig. You can answer by chat if you need to. Uh, yes, sir, is his answer. Um, <laughs> Dave, do you have sort of a, a structural document that explains all this? What you have, what you're missing, what your approach is, uh, be it a proof of yeah. Uh, you tell us. I've got, yeah, I've got I've got some um, fancy. Um, there's a if you want to have a flow chart, um, there's a tool called Mermaid JS, which takes the um, the text based steps and then renders them in a nice, pretty flow chart picture. So I've got one of those at the moment, but until we have the Lua bits put in place, that is likely to change quite a bit. I'm expecting we will find um, all sorts of 
fork and thread based things we hadn't thought about um, when we look at implemented lure hooks. But um, conceptually, I could draw I could draw a little picture for that. That would be a good idea. Yep. That would help because this this is all in your head and not yet ours collectively. So yeah. the better you can communicate that, the better people can jump in and help. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we can just give positive support and say, "Hey, let us <laughs> let us know how that's coming." Um, so, do you have any current flow charts now, or is that just an I'll, idea? I'll see during the call if I can persuade um, GitHub to render me a picture that I can share. Okay, um, and you can drop one right in the doc. Just go for it, or you can well, share your screen. Come from, I can't from my phone at the moment. I, oh, okay, I, I, fair I, enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, links, whatever works. So, in that, point out where you have Lua shortcomings, please. Yeah. Else, you oh, won't the, get Lua. The, the Lua part, I, sh I should say, the Lua part is, is is kind of the least of the problems, really. It's just that we haven't done it yet. Um, okay. The sandboxing in Lua is really, really simple. Um, creating uh, Lua's C integration is just super, super nice. Um, it's really easy to use. Um, um, so, that part of it isn't really the problem. Yeah. Dave? Yeah. Are you really sure you want to use only language based security instead of using uh, nested jails so that you can use the jail system call and then run arbitrary code in the outer jail for setup and teardown of the inner jail? Yeah. So, so in, in my mind here, I'm thinking that version one won't do that, absolutely or not, or the, the MVP, but version two should very easily be able to run jails inside jails. And that would kind of be the point. And for me, the ideal demonstration of that would be to try and run a full Poudrier inside the CI, inside a jail, because we know we can run Poudrier jail. So that would, for me, would be the ultimate test. Um, but yeah, I also <laughs> would like to use some Capscom um, security as well. Um, but right now, until the Lewis sandboxing piece is finished, I'm not entirely sure how that will work. Um, and I suspect what we'll find is that Conceptually, it would be really nice. Practically, it might be really difficult. Um, the outer, um, the, the parent process that does the talking to the rest of the world and the networking is a great candidate for dropping privileges and dropping all of its um, moving down to a restricted capability once it's forked. But the bit that creates a jail, um, sort of by its nature, will always have to be root and will always have to have um the sort of the full capabilities as it creates the jail um yeah but yeah version 1.1 or something will definitely be um create a jail to run a jail inside a jail all the way down dave is this motivated for free bsd as a whole or a project you're maintaining or one very specific thing what's the broader ci motivation here it's decades hate of Jenkins. It's truth. It's, it's hate driven okay. development, or maybe stronger than loathing driven development. Yeah. Oh uh, dear. Okay. Thank thing. you. Yes. Um, and <clears throat> really, what I wanted is something much much simpler that's still easily extend extensible. Whoops. Well, Jenkins has quite the graphical summaries, etc. What do you envision for that? Yeah, so the other side of it is um, a, a Phoenix. Uh, I just gotta. Um, so I've just gotta tell my wife I'm in a meeting. She seems to know. Uh, <laughs> sorry. There we go. Sorry, am I can invite again? her. No, I don't think she's a cover. Project. Hello? Am I here? You're here, and I heard something about Phoenix. Hello? Hello. We have two yarns. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. One sorry, I, I'm back again here. So there's two parts of it. One is this um, client-side, website, um, sorry, client-side jail stuff um, that, that, that should be pretty familiar. And the other side of it is a web-based um, uh Phoenix application. So Phoenix is kind of, for those of you who know Django, it's um, an Alexa version of that, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'm really hoping that we end up with a nice front end that doesn't have all of the ongoing 
security vulnerabilities that um, that Jenkins has. The, the very nature of CI is one half of it always hangs off, off the internet. It's really hard to avoid that. And um, Jenkins sort of suffers from the the, uh, the ongoing Java security vulnerabilities problem all the time. Are it's still there, awesome. Jenkins is awesome. Um, are there any big name apps we'd know from Phoenix Django? Well, so Django is the Python version, but Phoenix is a... Um, so what's big names? Bleacher Report is huge for doing stuff in the States. Um, Pepsi Cola's website is Phoenix powered. Um, what else is there? Uh, um, Bleacher Report. Bleacher Report. Anyone has links, drop them in there. <laughs> Bet365 Bet in the UK. Phoenix is a web framework, vaguely like a Ruby on Rails conceptually, but it runs on the Erlang VM. So we kind of have this um, hmm. this stack that's very reminiscent of WhatsApp, sort of FreeBSD base with um, an Erlang Elixir um, layer on top. Uh, it's a very nice, very nice web framework. Is this it spelled P H E N I X? No, Phoenix. That's like different. A, oh, like goodness. Phoenix. Yeah, I'll I'll post some links. Yeah, in the channel. great, cool. Because I have not heard of that, and if I haven't, I'm sure others haven't. So yeah, bring it on. Uh, why I elected Elixir and Phoenix as my main stack. How's the performance? You mentioned Ruby and uh, here, Portland at times has been a Ruby town. And then it's like, can we scale it? Like, you don't feel like scaling it. Don't, don't, don't go there. It's, it's really good. You can get like 2 million active connections on a single box. Okay. Um, yeah. What we would now consider a reasonable desktop for your average FreeBSD developer. Um, you know, sort of, 64 gigs of RAM and, and, and plenty of cores, but it'll do that very easily. Sure. Um, the design of the VM is not really a topic for this this call, but nope, it's, it's orthogonal, really but hey, it's yeah. new territory. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll try and post a couple of links in the, in the chat and um, a picture from um, at least the flowchart we got here. Yep. Cool. That'd be great. Any questions for Dave? Cool. Uh, Dan, you dropped Zelta in the chat. Any questions? I think the other Dan wants to have a release as soon as tomorrow as he re-enters from a faraway place. But Well, Jan said, are you using Zelta locally? Ah. And Rod says yes, but I don't know what Zelta is. But... Zelta is a an awk-based replication tool that will snapshot as needed that uh, Rodney and I are using on the WAN and LAN, and Dan uh, Bell has been working on that most enthusiastically and hopes to have a release of within the next few days. You've dropped in the link correctly, okay. and it is, uh, it's a bit unique in so far as you can aim it at nearly any system with, well, any POSIX compatible system with simply in base awk, et cetera. He's found a bunch of cross platform issues, as one does, and he's been aggressively fixing those. Rod, do you want to give your two second sales pitch? You've used remarkably kind words on Zelta. Not to hark back to Mikey hates everything. Mikey likes it. But Rodney is like, hey, this thing is actually making life. I easier. hate Zoom. You hate Zoom. Zoom hates you too, bud. Um, no, it, Zelta is just, a, it's a very easy to use, very easy to configure replication software. I mean, and it can there be used for lots of things. I'm using it. Initially, I was just using it to back up all my laptops to a, to a server so that I could clean up a bunch of work. And now I'm starting to use it in some of my other work because of its, it stops you from doing foot shooty type things with ZFS sends and receives. It makes it almost impossible to to blow your toes off. Um, unfortunately, ZFS receive does not do that. It will it will gladly receive a data set right over the top of your current route and promptly cause you lots of fun and grief. So. But um, yeah, and as far as a backup or a replication thing in the last 30 years, this is probably the the quickest thing from me reading a readme.md to having an, an operating environment. 
period out of any piece of software that can do this kind of stuff. It just the, the defaults are very sane and the configuration is very simple. How does it comp comp um, compare to probably Sanoid and um, what's its counterpart? Sanoid. Uh, Sync catch what it the, to that, which is catch the open use. ZFS call two weeks ago for Jim Salter on the call discussing with Dan. So uh, that's pretty well documented on the open ZFS calls. So oh, cool. catch up on those. And Dan there, Daniel's there, been great to work with. There's a fundamental design concept that's different between the two, and that's um, absolutely no use of dash force options to circumvent protection mechanisms. And that's Probably what makes Zelta pretty much it, you you can't blow your toes off with it. Yeah, uh, uh, it's evolved, but Daniel's description has been a tool I can safely use uh, mildly drunk after New Year's when I need to quickly back up a failing system. And then that evolved into a drunk grandmother after New Year's, and I think it continues to evolve. So as he hits the final release, the syntax and slogan may change, but it's indeed very, well, it's it's right out of his production. He's used it for, I believe, over two years. And with nudging and cajoling, he's kindly opened it up, received feedback, been very aggressive on accommodating feedback. And I've I've not seen many tools develop that rapidly in a very long time. So uh, I'm sure we'll hear from him later this week as he returns from a vacation. Bless his heart. So that's Zelta, Daniel. Uh, Chris, do you have anything from your circles? Are you still on the list? Yes, you're still here. Good, uh, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the robots are yes, back. I guess I just, uh, you're siloning. Your audio needs okay, to be good uh, otherwise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna that was kind of cool. And I wouldn't know how to reproduce that in a sound environment, sound lab. Quite... No, but I know how to reproduce it with careful, careful packet congestion. There you go, a little dummy net, perhaps. Other topics or questions while Chris rejoins. All right, right. Ararat Rat and Antrenig, any any observations in the last few minutes? Okay, so Jan, thank you for posting the open ZFS minutes where others can read about uh, Zelta, which I will continuously point out is gold in Latvian. And while this is completely inappropriate for the jail call, it looks like VMware has pulled the plug on freely available ESXi. So that's a topic to watch in the broader environment. And Oh, I hadn't heard that. They've officially pulled the plug on free ESX? Uh, yeah, there's a, a knowledge base that just showed up. I'll gladly load that because it's breaking news that impacts all the things. And let's say it's about jailed beehive so it's clearly a jail topic let's try to open that um, and it's pretty stark and unceremonious it's just like okay no longer available let's bring that up do 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 do, do. oh there's a support assistant but not more loading loading we can load I am also staring at a white screen, unless they've retracted it. So maybe, I don't know. Ah, uh, come on. Come on, VMware. Yeah, I see spinny, spinny. Give that a moment and connecting. Maybe the page is getting hit pretty hard. I can't imagine anyone being concerned. Yes, I see in the chat, uh, various profanity and advocate, advocacy for Beehive and the FreeBSD now, which, okay, so here we go. 
End of general availability of the free vSphere hypervisor, ESXi 7 and 8 from the 12th, that is yesterday. Total views, 888,000 symptoms. Uh, no longer available. Resolution, along with the ter termination of perpetual licensing Broadcom, has also decided to discontinue the free ESXi hypervisor making it as end of general availability. Regrettably, oh sure, there is no currently substitute product offered. Well, not from you. So there is a blog post if you want a few more words, but that's pretty blunt as a, a tech doc. Any news or questions regarding that? Or is it about as clear as can be? <clears throat> And Jan, you say it's reaching the top of Hacker News. Hmm. And I'm sure Reddit and friends are on fire over this. So let's see if they use kinder words here and lovely comforting rationale. So we actually all feel guilty for using ESXi for decades, I'm guessing. And Chris, you are still offline, no worries. No, it finally zoomed, and now it's a bit too zoomy. Let's see. Okay, I think I shared a picture of the... Uh, oh, beautiful. The wood. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when I get a proper one, I'll put it in the doc. Uh, I'll do that offline. Can I drop that one in the doc just as a teaser? Uh, no, I'll get a proper one, because okay. it's missing like a third at the bottom, because Got it. mobile phones. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so yeah, if you're on the chat, go ahead and grab that, and... Uh, that can wait. Uh, and speaking of um, VMware rumors, um, I heard from a couple of places that the Salt Stack um, might be mothballed too. Uh, yeah. Salt Stack might be mothballed, you say? Yeah, apparently people working on it have been reassigned to other stuff as well. So. Uh, wait, it was Salt Stack within the VMware Broadcom umbrella yes oh yeah, i did not know that oh when it rains it pours okay so okay let's let's and that salt came up just the other day hmm that was me i think that brought that up yes sir perfect timing and your audio sounds great <laughs> Bill Coleman. see how long it holds up Uh, do you have any news from your circles? Uh, I was just checking that. I got an update from Greg that I can share if you're interested. Of um, course. He's also been busy. What happened? Uh, oh, still loading. So... Great. Um, basically, um, around the enterprise working group, there's been a bit of progress, but there's a couple of things that are definitely stalled at the moment. In particular, for example, the open GDK uh, thing that has been uh, posted also as a position for a developer uh, that the foundation is looking to hire for. Unfortunately, um, there was one candidate, but that didn't work, that didn't pan out basically. So if you know someone who's uh, who's interested in that or, or, or basically uh, um, skilled to fill that position, um, I think it would be very very much appreciated if uh, if you um, if you let people know that the position is still open. Basically, question um, is that basically porting and maintaining the open JDK GA JDK port on FreeBSD or other integrations. It's uh, yeah. It is primarily for uh, actually. I, I, I've got the. Um, if you've got the description, got, feel free to post. I've got that. the description right here. Yeah, I've got perfect. It. Uh, drop it in the um, doc. Save everyone some steps. I mean, let's get yes, that message out there. Yes. Uh, um, quite a few people are looking for work with all the various churn out there. So this is a message to get out there, even if a bit orthogonal to jails explicitly. So. 
Got it. Um, uh, sure. Are there any jail uh, of JDK hackers here? And this is worth a view or no, let's free ourselves of those shackles. Salt project. <laughs> Salty. I like that. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> drop that in a sec. So yeah, let's see the open JDK contract. It's, 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 it's a contractor whose role it is to do all that's necessary. That sounds biblical. Uh, to support open jdk did was there a heyday when open jdk was well supported on freebsd and it languished or it just never quite reached full support i think it is probably both um yeah. and i think the main issue is there's there's a there's a bunch of enterprise software that is built on java i, I think we all know that yeah. and um obviously there's there's definitely a bunch of use cases. If we had that, we would be more attractive in terms of as, a, as an operating so system. One of the things is that OpenJDK recently dug a bit deeper into operating system specific features to implement green threads. And that requires basically a non blocking runtime or thread pool, uh, which, yeah, it's not possible with just po the POSIX common feature set. And to implement the runtime, so you have to dig into uh, FreeBSD specific APIs and Linux specific APIs and so on to really support that and to perform as expected. Antronig and Ararat and your circles, folks like Faraz come to mind. Do we know if we have some Java hackers? We all hate Java. <laughs> Don't tell Chris that, but I... I no, no, it's fine. I mean, I hate it too. <laughs> We're all being I honest here. I know I hate Java because it has become irrelevant to me. So I don't no longer care. It's like it's like COBOL. It's still around a lot of the world, yeah. you know. <laughs> I know, but it doesn't run my world. So I don't <laughs> hate point, it man. because it's not relevant to me. Chris, you don't have to name names, but is there an organization that has a Java-based stack that is being driven off of FreeBSD and just wants to see this happen? Or is what is to be honest, something? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just know that it was one of the key factors that was also brought up in the enterprise working group. And understandably so, just like I said, you know, a lot of business software, unfortunately, it is I mean, unfortunately, it is it is what it is. Yeah. A yeah, lot of business software wrong. runs on Java and that's um there there is a need for it. Cool. Well, that's for the job opening section of the call. Um, right. Sorry about that. No. no, nothing to be sorry about. People are looking for work, and there's obviously churn, perhaps even with the uh, salt stack uh, department. Yeah, just because one might be managing jails with salt, let's take a quick peek there. Changes in policy. That's nice and passive. Oh, he's quoting it, history. The the article is notable more for um, the change in direction and less in, it's more the un, unsaid part of the article. Okay. Um, so if you summarize it in three lines, it's we weren't making money before. Some of the stuff is going to move into different places. We're going to close off a whole lot of issues and stuff that's been dragging us behind. The community consultation process doesn't work, so we're getting rid of that too. It yeah. definitely reads like that, yeah. Okay. I mean, Broadcom will Broadcom, you know? We all know what Broadcom does. <laughs> yeah. I hope the LSI Avago team remains vaguely independent. We storage people live and die by their cards. Other topics, questions, ideas, concerns, job opportunities. Um, yeah. I missed the last few weeks, but did Doug um, have any news on the working group, on the OCI working group? He did have some updates. They were 
simply about moving along the GitHub repo to track changes is, is in effect and perhaps set up. Uh, and Dave, unless you missed it, uh, Jamie dropped jail descriptors on us for review. So do take a peek at that. The review's in the document here. Uh, here is the update with a link to the GitHub repo. It sounds like you're on a phone, so that might not be helpful, but simply check the doc. Uh, yeah, CNI I, I... came up and networking strategies and things like the Calico project, which sounded interesting for virtual networking. At which point, Antrenic will say simply use Crossbow on the Lumos and will not disagree. But, uh, <laughs> and so it doesn't solve blast. the same problem. Okay. What Calico does is multi host ah. overlay networks without overlaying. So, what it does is it basically uh, is the IPAM solution so that you can allocate IP ranges to your different tenants and then use BGP as a signaling to keep uh, virtual routing tables and stateless firewalls in sync so that the tenants are isolated and can just use unencapsulated IP among each other. Nice. Brief and, access control. And then Andre commented in chat, Crossbow now has multi-host overlay. Let the best stack win. So, But again, it's not really an overlay. It manages your network and its access control lists so that you don't have to suffer any encapsulation. Chris, .NET and FreeBSD, are you referring to Janus's Janus, uh, presentation from Coimbra? I believe he's working with Corvin. Um, uh, Chris, finally, Chris, finally, it worked for, um, let me see if I just had it open. Here it is. Um, I'm going to put that one here. Yeah, searching net on uh, fresh ports probably will get you about 800 results. There you go, .NET. They spelled it out. Good for them. <laughs> Good. Okay. And it compiles. It finally compiles. It's 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 uh, it's not exactly obviously, but um, in the most recent range you can already Who wants to tell him? Your audio is once again a bit dicey, dodgy. Uh, yeah, oh, well, you did in chat. Thank you, Jan. Did the honors. I appreciate that. Uh, um, regarding the jail descriptors, I looked at the suggestions and yes, sir. having a, a special FD system called to create basically an unbound jail descriptor and then passing that into the uh, system, the jail descriptor system calls would be, in my opinion, a cleaner approach than using negative uh, numbers to indicate that you want to allocate a file descriptor because it appears like uh, Jamie wants to implement the complexity of basically having unbound shell descriptors. So uh, using them that way would be uh, cleaner than having kind of in-band signaling. Did you within say our parameters. on the review? Yes. Cool, thank you. That's where it belongs. And I learned about the special FD uh, system call from that review because it, cool. it's already used to implement things like timer FD, I think, or event FD at least. Looks like Bjorn has issues with it. Okay. It's unfinished so far because sure. uh, there is no, and the other question is how to integrate it with Capsicum, but that's, on the to-do list and how uh, what's also missing is the uh, KQ notification. Mm. Um, I okay. still don't know why he wanted to create a new filter instead of just using the flex field uh, from the existing KQ event uh, uh, to configure when to report read uh, filter support. But hey, the other thing is that it, Capsicum already has support for our octal, so if it's its own file descriptor uh, type, it should have its own ioctal handler. So I don't see a reason why the it takes new system calls instead of putting ioctals on the existing ones, because then the existing tooling to filter which ioctals to allow on a Capsicum restricted file descriptors could just be reused. But there may be advantages to allocating new 
file description, uh, so new system call numbers to these features. I don't know. Um, that's for someone else to comment on who knows more about that part of the kernel. <laughs> Dan, did you get your explanation on what role this plays? He did give an example of the what was it potential race conditions. I highlighted that earlier. Boop, 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 boop. Where did that go? No, I was listening. I'm upgrading yeah. some things. Eliminate the race problem where jail is a given ID. Da, 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 re, da, ba, ba. So I'll leave that. Basically, the life. The idea is that the lifetime of the jail is bound to the file descriptor. So if your CI runner gets kill dash nine, uh, the jail gets wiped by the kernel. Um, and there is no name you have to fight over. So you can just get the next instance uh, then. And you can watch it like a process also, right? I mean, that, that's also a major And difference. the other nice thing is that you get state notifications through the file descriptor so that you, you learn if the jail has died, for example, because your CI has finished. And you can use it to uh, kill off the uh, jail as well when all of that is implemented so that you can do the, the jail destroy through it and it's just a nicer interface when having to be the to, because most of the time users don't want to deal with jail ids but with jail names and then you have to do oh, right now the jail to, to jail ID, name to jail id translation and then do some operations by jail id which yeah, is in theory a race condition but in practice not a problem because you normally don't expect someone else to Race you for a jail name in that manner. But yeah. Cool. Watch that space. Anything else, or shall we call it? The other thing is that it gives us a backdoor way to get unprivileged jails by having a demon who is privileged. Um, hand over jail descriptors over Unix sockets so that you could have basically the policy enforcement of what are you allowed to run jail, which jails are you allowed to manage in what way, could be managed via um, the jail descriptor. And then you have the daemon as policy enforcement point and then a suitably restricted file descriptor hand over the Unix socket. Was Jamie explicit about that? Because that's an attractive opportunity. Um, that's just a corollary for making it a file descriptor, which is possible, which doesn't defend against getting passed between processes. Cool. And yeah, we, I mentioned this in uh, the call before, and just, yeah, that hold off on that idea. We need everything in place of that. Sure. sure. Because it, wouldn't be right now it would be uh, insecure as in you would be able to destroy or say, change the uh, properties of the jail or attach to it or destroy it as soon as you have the file descriptor you can't uh, apply fine-grained access control right now okay. yeah cool. anything else Well, I will see some of you tomorrow for the Open ZFS call. I invite you to follow the links mentioned in the previous notes. A lot's been going on. And uh, I wish you a fantastic week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Like and subscribe. <laughs> That's right. Like and subscribe. <laughs>